We are joined on the phone by a woman who is partying like crazy, I'm sure, down there in Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> She's the Attorney General of Massachusetts. Good morning, Martha Coakley. Good morning, and I went to bed early last night because I knew I had to be up to talk to you guys. Oh, so. nice try, Very Martha good. Coakley. <laughs> no, I'm, you can't see me, but I'm wide awake, alert. We've, we've done a couple laps around the arena already this morning. So yeah, Is the Massachusetts delegation in a swank hotel or a not-so-swank hotel? We're in a around? close hotel, which is great. Good. It's a, it's a mid-swank, and it's um, mid-swank. nice enough, and it's close enough because the weather's been as you know yesterday yeah. was okay but the weather's been a little pea soupy and uh it's been great to be able to walk around in our garbage bags because <laughs> well you can't bring umbrellas into the convention so every night you drop your umbrellas outside oh, and then God. when you come out you hope you find a better one on the way out <laughs> So, Martha Coakley, you ran against Scott Brown, obviously, for the United States Senate. Elizabeth Warren is now running against Scott Brown for the United States Senate. Elizabeth Warren addressed the, con- uh, the convention last night. What did you think of her performance? I thought she was good. Look, she's been out on the stump uh, with that very important message that I obviously care about. Look, I support Elizabeth Warren. I support uh, the things that she champions, which is economic fairness and making sure people get a fair shake. Um, she is. Uh, she was on message last night. She got that across. I think the Massachusetts delegation was very proud of her performance. And I think the rest of the country got to hear her and uh, what she wants to do. And look, you know, it's a little different this time around, right? Uh, Scott Brown has a record that he has to answer for. Uh, Voters are going to really focus in the next nine weeks on uh, what they want to have happen and who they want to send to to Washington. But, you know, I don't know if you've had a chance to see this morning's New York Times, uh, Attorney General Coakley, but they picked up on what the Herald, Boston Herald, my newspaper, has been talking about for weeks, this whole uh, Cherokee Nation thing with some relative of Geronimo saying Elizabeth Warren needs to take a DNA test and somebody else saying she needs to uh, speak in her native language to prove she's a legitimate Native American. New York Times. The New York Times is going after her the day after her debut on this Native American stuff, which is still plaguing her. Yeah, well, I think the New York Times is reporting what is one of these issues that always, uh, for both candidates, it's what I would like to call a fringe issue. It's about something that isn't directly related to what really matters when we send someone to Washington. And I think that, you know, Scott Brown's had issues like that. She will, as every candidate will. Look, voters don't get distracted by and large by those issues. They should be covered. Uh, Candidates have to answer for them. I understand that. But this is really about... Who is going to, as we reelect President Obama, who's going to go to Washington and get things done, make sure that they promote an agenda of turning this economy around, as we heard the tremendous President Clinton last night talk about. We do better under Democrats. Um, we, you heard Governor Patrick talk about how Massachusetts did much better under uh, uh, his administration. Uh, we know better than anybody what happens with a Romney administration. And whatever we say, uh, there is a Republican platform, there is a Republican agenda, and whoever goes down has six years in Washington now uh, to uh, carry out that agenda. I frankly think when voters look at uh, the big tent of Democrats, how well we've done economically, both on the national level, digging out of this economic crisis, you want President Obama and you want someone like Elizabeth Warren, who's a champion for fairness in Washington. Now, Martha Koch, the question I wanted to ask you for months that came to the head yesterday was this. Are you for God or are you against God? That's the question. Now, did the Democrats not embarrass themselves? They take God out of the platform. I know platforms don't matter. And then to compound it, they then try to put it back in. The delegates clearly vote against putting it back in, yet the mayor of Los Angeles says by by a two-thirds voice vote majority. This was a real embarrassment. Wasn't this an embarrassment? I don't think so, Jim. And if you've been agonizing over that for months, you see, you talk to me every month. Why have you been sitting on this question? This is one of those issues uh, that, you know, comes up. Look, we talk about God all the time. We uh, have God in our Pledge of Allegiance. Uh, It is something that, again, people argue over. It's good to have these discussions, but I don't think Democrats are embarrassed. I think they have a platform they can be proud of, including having God mentioned in the platform. What do you think of uh, the consensus in the studio is one of the best political speeches maybe ever. It was Bill Clinton last night till 1120. What would you think, Martha? Uh, absolutely. And, you know, I had the chance, obviously, when I was campaigning to campaign with him. Right. There is nobody who takes a very complicated thing like health care or the debt and is able to put it into words that people can understand. Now, you may not agree with him, but you cannot uh, say he he, he loves uh, uh, the, the crowd. The crowd loved him last night and, and in person and I'm sure on television. Uh, He was having a great time up there. People were enjoying it. I know he went twice as long as he was scheduled for, uh, but everybody was hanging on every word. And I think the audience at home 
really appreciated what he did. We can put his presidency in perspective, particularly the economic turnaround that he was able to do. And he also was a great advocate for President Obama. And he said some yeah, things that maybe the president doesn't say or can't say. That is, he came into a mess like no president has had since the 1920s. And he has fought every day to turn that around. We've made progress as we've made in Massachusetts after a Republican governor. And voters have to remember that. Attorney General Martha Coakley, I, I think I remember when President Bill Clinton came to the Boston Park Plaza to campaign for you in Absolutely. the uh, waning days. Did he give you a nice close squeeze when he oh, put his arms around you, <laughs> Attorney General Coakley, or was he above board? Marjorie, he is very friendly with all his voters, and he is a... <laughs> He is. He's a he is a great campaigner and he loves the crowd. He loves shaking hands. Uh, you know, he's a southern southern guy. And he's, he's a southern he, boy. He is. Hey, but Marth, he, Marth. he had the crowd last night. And and uh, can I say something? Sure, I sure. want to remind people today is primary day in Massachusetts. I'm so glad you said that, by the way. I meant to, it God. is primary day because what are the Jewish I holiday forgot. or something? But go ahead. Yeah, no, I just want to remind people when's the last time we had to vote on a Thursday, Thursday. I think it was nineteen eighty eight, as uh uh, we heard down here this week, but um, I've cast my uh, ballot. Uh, I, I sent it in by mail, but I just want to remind people, you know, we, we talk about voting. Uh, it is a right that people die for still. Uh, in other countries and in our country, we send people to protect that right to vote. We should use that. And I don't really care who people vote for, but it is important that people's voices be heard. And and frankly, you don't have a right to criticize, uh, to call you and uh, Jim and Marjorie up and complain if you haven't cast your ballot. Amen. I'm with you. Now, Martha Coakley, before we let you go here, so was the decision that you would approve the Concord plastic water bin and then get out of town really quickly was that the de- was that the deal of course <laughs> so martha Cook, this actually is a huge story in the talk radio world it you is. Ru- what was the, what did you rule exactly what was well, the decision well, you- well keep in mind look you got to understand you know massachusetts again um puts a lot of authority gives a lot of discretion to our cities and towns you know we go back to that uh we didn't like the king we let cities and towns decide we our statutes allow for a lot of discretion in our cities and towns in that government to decide things like bylaws the role that we play as attorney general is just to look at any bylaw to see does it uh, conflict with either state law or federal law or constitutional law we don't pass on the wisdom of it doesn't mean I agree with it or I disagree with it we look at it as we do for instance questions on the ballot to make sure they are appropriate for the voters to decide this is really a democratic thing that cities and towns get to do in Massachusetts um, and you can like it or not like it uh, we have said and I think we've indicated in our decision there still could be court challenges to it, but at least from our role in looking at whether it on face conflicted with state law or federal law, uh, we said it didn't. And so uh, for now, uh, Concord can can take that action. By the way, I don't know, you didn't see yourself because at the convention, I'm watching CNN late last night. We go from John Kerry yawning in the middle, middle of Elizabeth Warren's speech to you a couple of seconds later. And let me just tell you, you look fabulous. Martha well, Coakley. I always look good on radio too, Jim, right? <laughs> Martha Thank Coakley, you. Attorney Thank General, you. thanks so much for your time. Martha we'll talk to you again next month. And don't you guys forget to vote if you haven't yet. When you get off that show, I want you both to go to the ballot. And I'll I, check with you next month, Jim. I you know, never, ever I miss a vote. Forgot Thank you very it much, was Martha Coakley. Primary day.